now? Okay, I want to pray with this message. Lord, we're thanking you for this opportunity, Lord, in Jesus' name, to to be uh, to speak on your behalf, Lord. And that, Lord, you speak through me. That they will see you and me, not me. And we thank you for your anointing upon this message, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. The name of my message today, and it's going to go a, a kind of along with what uh, Evangelist Bobby was talking about this morning. The name of it is called, Don't Look Back. Learn from Lot's wife. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go right away and we're going to go into the scripture. Okay? And then we're going to talk about this. Okay? And um, remember, what is the Lord trying to say here to us? What is the picture that he's trying to paint for us as we go through these scriptures? You know, scripture interprets scripture. You know, when you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, this is God speaking to you. It's his mouthpiece talking to you. So as we go through this, uh, through these scriptures, what is the Lord trying to say to us here today? Okay, so this, uh, my first scripture is in Genesis 19, and it's 14 through 17. This is when, when uh, God had pronounced judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels went there to save uh, Lot and his family, okay? It says, so Lot rushed out to tell the daughter's fiancés, quick, get out of the city, the Lord is about to destroy it. But the young man thought he was only joking. At dawn, the next morning, the angels came insistent, hurry, they said to Lot, take your wife and you two daughters who are here, get out now, he says, or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot hesitated, the angels seized their hands. And, uh, and the hands of his wife and his daughters and rushed him to safety out of the city for the Lord was merciful when they were safely out of the city one of the angels ordered commanded run for your lives and don't look back or even stop anywhere in the valley okay and we're going to jump down to uh, the same chapter but it's going to be 26 it says but Lot's wife turned and looked back when she was following him and she turned into a pillar of salt, okay? In other words, when the angel ordered them, he commanded them not to look back, but she looked back, okay? What was the reason that she looked back? We don't know. It could have been any reason that she looked back, but the thing is she was warned not to do it and she, learned, she looked back and then look what happened to her. The fate of Lot's wife is a warning against being tied to worldly possessions. Uh, what's happening is a lot of people are, they live in the past. God's already saved them. They're a child of God. God says you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, but people are still living in their past, and God doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to move on. And as we go into the, through the scriptures, you're going to see what God is trying to tell us here. Okay? See, what, uh, it, it could be any reason that people look back, back at their past. It could be the love of the world. It could be that past hurts. Somebody hurt them. Somebody offended them. They have unforgiveness. They have bitterness and resentment against somebody that hurt them. But God wants you to move on. He says that he's the healer of the broken heart. And he yes. binds up the wounds. He wants us to go on and not be looking back. You can't drive forward. And, and you can't drive forward if you're looking back. There's no way you can do it. You can't look at two directions at the same time. So God wants us to move on. You know, some people are looking back. They can't, forbid, they can't forget what happened to them five years, 20 years ago. She hurt me. He fired me. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what I went through. But if Jesus, he was our example. He's on the cross. He's been beaten. He's been tortured. You know, his back has been ripped to shreds. He's about to die. And what does he tell the Father? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He wouldn't ask you to do something that he hasn't already done. The Lord says that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. He'll strengthen you to move on. So that what is the Lord trying to tell us here? Okay, what's he trying to say? Even Jesus mentioned it here in Luke 17. Jesus was talking to his disciples, Luke 17, 31. He was talking to his disciples about uh, things that were going to happen, things were going to take place. And he said, on that day, those that are on the roof should not come down to get their belongings out of their houses. Those that are in the field should not turn back. 
remember Lot's wife. Yes. If Jesus mentioned it, what do you think he's trying to tell us? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. He doesn't want us looking back. You know, because, uh, you know, if you keep looking at back at things that happened to you, offenses, somebody hurt you, I know, I've been there. I've been there. God had to help me through this. So if he can help me, he can help you. The hurts, you know, every time you think about it, the hurt returns over and over again. It's like it reopens the old wounds again every time you think about the past. Every yes. every time you think about the past. In, in other words, I read, I read a quote here on... Uh, on Facebook that says forgive people forgive people in your life even those that are not sorry for their actions holding on to anger only hurts you not them it only hurts you so God wants us to just let it go he, you know uh, you know he's gonna bring healing to those areas and he's gonna help you you know I had had I had gone through things in my past that that were very hurtful you know and I had I had to I asked God to heal those wounds and to heal the bad memories. And do you know that now I can think about it, but the sting is gone? I don't hurt anymore. So we have to do that. And this is what the Lord is trying to tell us here today. So we're going to go through this. Okay, it says, don't dwell on past hurts or offenses or disappointments. Don't talk about them or replay them in your mind. When a negative thought comes to your mind, cast it out in Jesus' name. Replace it with the promise of God. Word. Yes. You need to forgive those that hurt you and offended you. And you know, sometimes you even have to forgive yourself. Maybe you've asked God to forgive, you know, I forgive you of your sins, but maybe you haven't forgiven yourself of the things that you did mm -hmm. in the past. But 1 John 1 9 says that if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And He says that He doesn't remember the sins. So, if he doesn't if he doesn't remember the sins anymore but you're being tormented about things in the past and you keep dwelling on the past guess who's doing that the devil comes to kill to steal and to destroy jesus came to give you life that's where he attacks us in the mind those are fiery thoughts of the enemy coming against our mind so when those thoughts come and you know that the word says that he already forgave you and he says that he doesn't remember it anymore guess who's doing it it's the enemy so that's why the Lord says that we're to cast on vain imaginations and we're to take every thought captive. Wait a minute, where's that coming from? If it's already under the blood or God already forgave me, why am I thinking it's the enemy? So you're to cast it down. What did Jesus use against the devil, Satan, when he was trying to tempt him? He hit him with the word. See, it is written. He kept hitting him with the word. It is written, see, because the word of God is a two-edged sword. So if Jesus do, did it, we're to imitate him. We're supposed to do it. Those thoughts come. No, it's under the blood. I don't receive it. I cast it yes. down in the name of Jesus. That God wants you to take authority over what he's given you. He's giving the word of God. He's giving you the name of Jesus. And he's giving you the blood of Jesus. I know I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again because he goes right along with this. Uh, Kenneth Hagin, I use him a lot. He was one of my spiritual fathers. You know, I use him a lot. He, uh, the first time that Jesus appeared to him, and he, and he sees him, and he's talking to him, and all of a sudden, this demon started jumping in front of him, and he can't hear him, and he's thinking, well, Jesus, why don't you tell him something? And he went, and so Kenneth Hagin commanded that thing to leave, and that thing left. And then he says, Lord, why didn't you tell him anything? And he says, I can't. I gave you the authority, so you have to do it. So that's what God's, God is saying. You have to do this. Amen. Okay? And it says here, you know... Uh, you know, even uh, even the children of Israel, okay, when they were when Joseph was alive and they were living in Egypt with that Pharaoh that loved Joseph, they had it made. But as soon as they died, another Pharaoh came in, in place and he started tormenting them. Became made made them slaves. So they started crying out to God, and God need, sent a deliverer. He sent Moses, okay. Mm -hmm. So he delivers them. See, Egypt is the type of the world. Okay, that's the type of the world. Yes. And he delivered them from the world. He delivered them out of Egypt. They're in the wilderness and they're complaining. You know, God's feeding them every day. He even bread from heaven. He's feeding them. He's taking care of them. The Bible says there was not one feeble one among them. Forty years, their shoes never wore off. They never got sick. God was taking care of them. He would protect them. By day, he was, he was like a fire by, uh, by day. And at night, he was like a cloud. His, the, his presence went with them. He took care of them. But here 
you see in Numbers 11, 5, and 6, they're saying, we remember the fish. We remember the cucumbers. We remember the melons and the leeks and the garlic. Uh, there is nothing at all besides manna before our eyes, and it angered the Lord. What do you think? They're thinking he delivered them, and yet they're, they're talking about the past. They're talking about the world. They're talking about Egypt. Okay, so as we go through these scriptures, what is God trying to tell us here? Jesus said in Luke 9, 59 and 62, he said to another, follow me. But Lord, let me first go bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid farewell to my house. And Jesus said to them, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hello? See, the cost of discipleship is high, and it demands that we give, it, give him our all. Yes. See, we don't belong to ourselves anymore. We've been bought with a price, and that's the blood of Jesus. We don't belong to ourselves. We have to die to self. Okay? My next uh, scripture in Isaiah 43, 18, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? The verse commands us to leave the past and get ready for the future. The Lord has new things in store for us. And like I said before, it's impossible to look in two directions at the same time. It's impossible. My next, uh, my next, uh, my next scripture is in the same chapter as Isaiah 43:25, and I looked it up in two different translations because sometimes it'll bring it out better. Okay, it says here, this is the Lord. He says, I. I even am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. And then I found another one, another translation that says, but I will wait, uh, wipe away your sins because of who I am. So I will forget the wrongs that you've done. So if somebody is reminding you of things that you've done 20 years ago, guess who it is? Take authority and say, no, I cast that down. That's under the blood in Jesus' name. Okay, in the Second Corinthians five sixteen and 17, it says, Therefore, if you, you are in Christ, you're a new creature. That was the old you. This is the new you. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Okay, that's what the Lord is trying to tell us, okay? Now, here we're in Hebrews 12, 1 and 3. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures, okay? Therefore, since we are surrounded, you know, by a huge cloud of witnesses, to the life of faith, let us strip every weight that's, that slows us down, especially the sin so that easily trips us up. And let us run to the endurance, the race that God has set before us. A runner, when you see a, a runner running towards the prize, if he looks back, what's gonna happen? If he looks to the side, what's gonna happen? He's gonna fall, he's gonna trip. That's why he wants us to stay focused and keep looking forward. We do this, see, by the enemy doing that, by the enemy keeping you in your past, you're, you're not progressing. You're, you're not doing what, you're not going in the direction that God wants you to go. He wants you to stay in the past so that you won't do what God's called you to do. That's why God wants us to stay focused. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. See, he kept looking to the, the, the future for the joy that was set before him. He kept looking forward. You never hear about Jesus looking back. He was always focused on what God, God called him to do. He, and he is now seated at the place of honor besides God's throne. I'm sure that all of us have some personal weights in our own life that will hinder you in the race. Let the Holy Spirit deal with you today. Yes so that you can achieve what he has in store for you. Something before the foundations of the world. You know, it says in Ephesians that he chose you before the foundations of the world. You didn't choose him, he chose you. He already had a plan for you. It says, look at Jesus, our example. He stayed focused, he never looked back. Focus on the next step. Every lap counts. Get rid of the old baggage. A lot of times it's old relationship that God wants you to get rid of. Get rid of that old weight. You have a crown, you have, have you grown lukewarm? 
Are you half-hearted about running the race? God will re-energize you and get you back on track. In this life, you only have, you only get to run once. So run to win. To avoid stumbling or losing your place, don't look back. And I have a story for you. I'm a person that uses pictures and illustrations because it brings down the point. It's important that we not only work hard to fulfill the assignment that God has given us, but that we will finish the task no matter what it takes. Look at what Jesus did. No matter what he went through, the suffering, the rejection, everything, he still stayed focused and he finished the race. What did he say on the cross? It is finished. Mm -hmm. He finished it. He's our example. This, uh, this story that I'm going to tell you about, it's true. It's referring to a story, a, an Olympic story that happened in the 1970s. It was a Tanzanian marathon. You might have heard about it before. Hours behind the runners in front of him, the marathon runner finally entered the Olympic Stadium. By the time the drama of that day's events were almost over, most of the spectators had already gone home. This athlete's story, however, was still being played out. Limping into the arena, this Tarzanian runner, he was grimaced with every step because his knees were bleeding. He was bandaged because he had fallen earlier. He, his ragged appearance immediately caught the attention of the remaining crowd that were there. And they looked at him and they cheered him on to the finish line. Everybody was gone. He was the last one hours. He was there. Why did he stay in the race? What made him endure the injuries to the end? They were asking. When they asked him this question later, he said, my country did not send me here 7,000 miles to start the race. They sent me here to finish the race. And he finished the race. You see, he was focused. He was focused no matter what it took. And he did, he finished the race. The thought of this Tanzanian runner, absolute, his determination to finish the natural race provokes something in me when I think of our spiritual race. Folks, it's a spiritual race that we're in. Yes. We need the same gritty determination to finish the race that God has before each one of us. He paid too great of a price to stay in the starting gate, struck in bondage from which, which he uh, gave his life to free us. Allowing bondage of any kind to remain in our lives will eat us up on the inside and hold us back in the old. That's why he wants us to move on. Stop looking at the past. You know, you know, just, you know, release those people. Maybe they're not here anymore. People that have done you wrong. You know, people in the past have hurt me and I've had to release it to God. Lord, I forgive them. Yes. And not only lip service. I had, I had a, a friend of mine, one of my mentors, she had an abusive stepfather and his name was Booker. And she had already forgiven him a long time ago, but the Lord had been dealing with her. And as she was driving on the freeway, the Lord says, you have not forgiven Booker. What? Lord, I forgave him a long time ago. He said, no, it was just lip service. So when I, I do that, I say, Lord, help me to forgive them in my heart. Okay, so let's go on here with our message. You can't change the past. You can't change it. But thank God that we can learn from it and leave it behind. And I read, I, I read another quote on Facebook. I'm a Facebook missionary, so I'm on Facebook a lot. It says, it says here, never be a prisoner of your past. It was just a lesson, not a life sentence. Let me say that again. Never be a prisoner of your past. It was just a, a lesson, not a life sentence. Okay? So, here we go. Here we are. Okay, now we're um, in Proverbs. Proverbs 4, 25 and 27. It says, look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out the straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't be sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. In other words, keep your eyes on the word continually. Keep your eyes on Jesus continually. He will give you wisdom. He will lead you on a smooth path all the way to your goal. Every day, one step at a time. Yes. Take it like that song that says, one day at a, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. One step at a time. Paul here in Philippians 3.12 says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I'm already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which God, Jesus, has possessed for me. 
No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on. He says, I press on. I reached the end. Uh, he says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. See, Paul left his past behind, and you know some of pa uh, you know Paul's past, some of his past, all the failures, all the mistakes. Uh, he left them behind. He says not. Uh, it says he left them behind, not to, not letting him handicap his future. Paul is telling the Philippians to forget the past and start looking ahead. What is God trying to tell us here? I looked up the definition for press because it says I press on. The word, uh, uh, the definition for press means to strain, to stretch for what is ahead. We need to release or put out of our minds those things we need to be uh, that need to be left in the past and reach towards the, what is be ahead of us. Okay, we need to reach forward, press on. And here, this is this is Paul again. This is what he says. Look in Second Timothy four six, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. This is before he's going to pass. He's going to die. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid, laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Not only for me, but all those who have loved his appearance. Okay? And then it, here's another one. In 1 John 2, 15 and 17, the Lord says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it, it is not of the Father, but of the world, okay? And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of the Father will abide forever. You know, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 through uh, 13, the Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future. Did you hear him say past? No, he says future and a hope. Here's another example of somebody, okay, in the New Testament, blind Bartimaeus, okay? This is in Mark 10, 49 through 42. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying to him, be a good cheer, arise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he arose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered him and said, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man says, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus says, go your way, your faith has made you well. Immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus on the road. When blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus that he was within reach, he threw his coat. He threw that weight. He threw it off. And he says, lest, he tri lest it trip him. And his faith paid off. He received his sight right away. Yeah. Today, lay it aside. Throw it off. And run the race. Run the race. Look what he got. Okay, this is Jesus. Okay, this is in Isaiah 56 and 7. I gave my back to those who struck me. My cheeks to those who plucked my beard. I did not hide my face from shame or spitting. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I set my face like a flint. Okay? And I know that I will not be ashamed. I looked up the definition for flint. A flint is a very ha uh, hard type of sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock. Okay? When struck against steel, the, the flint edge produces sparks that start a fire. Setting your flint, you're setting your face as a flint like Jesus did implies that you're expecting opposition, but you stand strong in the face of adversity. That's what he did. No matter what comes your way, you stay, you're, uh, keep your face, uh, your face like a flint. Stay focused like the, the way Jesus did. Okay, Jesus set his face like a flint no matter what Jesus went through. He refused to lose his focus. He stayed looking forward, okay? There's gonna be distraction that's come, okay? There's gonna be temptations that come along to throw you off the course as you move towards the goal the enemy is going to try to trip you up throw in these these negative thoughts and and all kinds of things he says that's why you have to set your face like a flint 
stay focused and no matter what comes at you you're going to stay focused on what god's called you to do because remember you don't belong to yourself you belong to him and he, you've been bought with a price it says here in ephesians 4 30 and 32 let all bitterness all wrath all anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice be kind to one another tender heart forgiving one another even as uh, god in christ forgave you see i looked up the definition for forgive it means to cease to feel resentment against the offender at, or on account of the wrong committed to you to pardon as to forgives one enemies forgiveness cannot change the past but it can change your future yes. and forgiveness you know it, you know uh, I was listening to evangelist Bobby this morning as she was doing uh, she was doing the Bible study for us and the Holy Spirit gave her this illustration and I, I wrote it down because I said this is part of my message I got I have to give it to you she said unforgiveness is like kryptonite to Superman it zaps your strength that's what unforgiveness does see so that you have to let it go if Jesus on the cross had been tortured beaten he's about to die and he could forgive them he says father yes. forgive them for they know not no. what they do yes we're to imitate him and you can't say well i don't know if i could do that yeah he said he said you can do all things through christ with strength and you it's not your strength it's his you know here here uh jesus for at the crucifixion in luke 23 32 and 34 it says and we're all there and it says there were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death and when they had come to the place called Calvary, they were crucified with him. The criminals on one on the right hand side and one on the left. And this is where Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He is the greatest example of somebody yes. that used forgiveness. Okay, look to Jesus. He's our example. Jesus wouldn't ask you to do something that he hasn't already done. He's already done it. In Matthew 6, 14 through 15, it says, If you forgive men their trances, trespasses your heavenly father will forgive you if you don't forgive men their trespasses then your heavenly father is not going to forgive you it's as plain as day in matthew 18 21 and 22 peter came to him and said lord how often am i supposed to forgive my brother you know how much and he, up to seven times he, he asked him and the lord and jesus said did i not say to you up to did I, he says, I did not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Wow. You know how long? That's 140, 190 times. 190 times, 490 times. Failure to forgive destroys your own peace of mind. So what is the Lord trying to tell us here? I have an example here, you know, and you know, I have an example here of somebody that pardoned somebody, somebody for, forgave somebody. This is referring to Nixon granted a full pardon. At that time, he was caught in the situation with Watergate. He was probably going to be put in prison because of what he was involved in. And President Ford granted Richard M. Nixon a free and full pardon for this criminal conduct during his presidency. Nixon responded with a statement of remorse saying, my mistakes over the Watergate. Announcing the pardon, at a surprise appearance before newsmen and photographers, Ford said, I feel that Richard Nixon and his loved ones have suffered enough. His conscience, he said, my conscience tells me clearly and certainly that I cannot prolong bad dreams to continue and reopen this chapter that is closed. My conscience tells me only that I, as president, have the constitutional power to firmly shut and seal this book. Do you know that it would probably cost him his second term in presidency because he only ran one one term but you know he still he had to do what he felt the right thing to do to pardon him so uh, Pres uh, President Nixon didn't have to go to prison that's an example of somebody that pardoned somebody somebody forgave somebody and my summary is here we are to look at Jesus as an example he stayed focused you never read where he looked to his past don't look back Look, learn the lesson from Lot's wife. You can't drive forward and keep looking back at the same time. We're to finish the race that is set before us. We can't look forward and backwards at the same time. In this life, you only get, you get to run once. So run to win. 
Okay, so that's my message today, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I usually do, is I do a couple of uh, uh, prayers. One of them is, you know, if you've never, for those that are listening to this message today, and you've never accepted Jesus into your heart, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And if you're away from God, and you want to rededicate your life, all it is is just a rededication. You've already done it, but we're going to do it as a rededication. Just say this prayer with me. Just say, Father... Forgive me, Forgive me of all of my sins. Of all of my sins. Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. Now I want to I want to say a prayer concerning uh, this message that we did today. I want to pray for you, okay? Lord, I just want to lift up everybody that's that's been watching this message today. Lord. Yes. If they have things in their in their past, Lord that they need healing of. Lord, you said that you're the healer of the broken heart and yes. you bind up the wounds. I pray that you'll bring healing to those wounds, Lord, pouring the oil and the wine into those areas. Help them, Lord. Holy Spirit, help them to release those people and give them to you. Release them. Heal the bad memories, Lord. Heal the bad memories, Lord. And we're just thanking you, Lord, because you want us to move forward. You don't want us looking back anymore. We're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And and we're just thanking you already for this message, Lord. Seal it in their hearts that they will be doers of the word and not just hearers only in Jesus' name. And uh, this is my message for today. Until next time, have a blessed day. Amen. Amen.